All right, welcome into the Arrowhead Attic Chiefs Halftime Show. Patrick Allen here with you to talk about it. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button. At the half, the Bengals leading the Chiefs at Arrowhead in a must-win game for Kansas City. Uh, Cincinnati 17, Kansas City 13. Uh, some good in this game, some improvements, but also some of the same old bullshit. Um Listen, I'm just going to start with MVS. Nail his ass to the bench. I'm going to say it again. Nail his ass to the bench. At this point, the fact that Andy Reid keeps trotting him out there, I don't even blame MVS at this point. Like, I'm not even mad at MVS. It, it reminds me a lot of the end of Dan Sorensen's career with the Chiefs when it was clear he was cooked. He couldn't play anymore. He was a good player for the Chiefs for a number of years but and made big plays for them in big moments. But he was done. And the Chiefs just kept trotting him out there, just trotting him out there all year long, and he kept hurting the team. And then like you, at that point, you can't even really blame him. He just can't He can't do it. It's like if they put me in there at quarterback, it, like, it wouldn't really be my fault. I'd be terrible. I'm not an athlete, right? So the fact that they keep putting MVS out there at this point, it's not even his fault anymore. It's Andy Reid's fault. He's a net negative. It's the same thing with Kadarius, Tony, and Sky Moore. Those guys have done more damage to the offense than they have positive this season. So at a certain point, you're better off with nobody. You're better off putting Noah Gray at wide receiver. Hell, put Creed Humphrey out there, out wide. Have somebody else snap the ball. Put Winchester in there to snap the ball. Put Creed Humphrey out there. I mean, he's probably not going to get open and catch the ball, but he might. We know MVS can't catch the ball. He just absolutely killed that drive. Probably could have scored if he caught that ball. I also don't understand why MVS was even running that route. Why are you running a drag route like that with MVS when you've got Rasheed Rice on the team and he's incredible with run after the catch? At least if Rasheed Rice dropped that ball, you're like, okay, you know, rookie has a little bit of a problem with drops, but Rasheed Rice is not a net negative for the Chiefs when he steps on the field. He actually helps them most of the time perform better. MVS can't play anymore. I have a ton of respect for him. I always love him for what he did for the Chiefs last year in that Super Bowl run, but he's done. He's done. He can't play. He can't catch. He can't get open. His I don't know what it is. His head's not right. It doesn't matter. He, he can't play anymore. They can't play him. And I'm sorry to spend half the show – talking about this, but it's just infuriating. If you're a fan and you're watching this team and they're, they're doing everything they can in this game offensively to, to, to try to get better. And then you've got a guy out there who has shown you time and time and time and time again for 16 games that he can't play anymore. And you're just trotting him back out there and throwing him the ball on third down. It's, it's nuts. It's insane. It's a thousand percent on Andy Reed. There's nobody else to blame. He's the head coach. Put McCole Hardman out there. Anybody, anybody. The guy can't play. He can't play. Um, it's it's just it's just unbelievable. Uh, the rest of the offense in this game, they're doing a lot of things well. Obviously, they had the turnover. Something else we have to talk about. Can't do it. Can't have the turnover set the Bengals up for a, a touchdown because they can't you know, they can't take care of the football. They haven't been able to do it all year. They're not doing it today. You've got a. Young tackle out there and Wanye Morris, who's given it his all. He's doing his best. He's the third round pick. You know, this was the risk you take when you bring in a veteran like Donovan Smith and you get you draft a guy in the third round. Donovan Smith is older. He's had injuries in the last couple of years. He's not available for you. And now you're starting to pay for it. I think Wanye Morris is doing okay today, but uh, you know, he got burned and the Chiefs got a turnover, and that's that. Mahomes. 9 of 12 for 79 yards and a touchdown. The, the thing that really stands out to me in that line is that he just he just really didn't have the ball for very long. Uh, I'm going to pull up the time of possession stats for you right now. Yeah, so in that first half, 21 minutes and 50 seconds for the Bengals, 8 minutes and 10 seconds for the Chiefs. So if you're looking for a silver lining in how this how this played out in the first half, the Chiefs did quite a bit um, offensively, you know, with with their with their drives, with not having the ball for very long. So another silver lining is that they're running it 
They're actually running the football a little bit. Five carries for Isaiah Pacheco, 88 yards. He's busted off a run of 37 yards. He's been great. He also has is leading the team in receptions. Three receptions for 35 yards and a touchdown. The Chiefs need to keep getting Isaiah Pacheco the ball. If they can do that, I think they've got a really good shot to come back and win this one because the offense is actually moving the ball pretty decently. I actually really like three uh, three targets and three catches for Noah Gray in this one. We've been talking about this on the podcast all week, for, for a couple of weeks now, that the Chiefs needed to simplify things. And then one of the guys that they should maybe look to a little bit more often, I mean, he's not going to save your ass, but like Noah Gray, every time you throw him the ball, usually good things happen. He catches it. He's athletic. He can get a little bit of run after the catch. I'm really intrigued by the fact that they targeted him three times in the first half, given the the, the time of possession discrepancy. I think we're going to see a lot more of Noah Gray in the second half, call it a hunch, but I think Andy's obviously, he's listening to the podcast, he's taking my advice. Um, he's trying to get the ball to Noah Gray a little bit more. Let us know your thoughts in the chat. I see you all sounding off there. We got a few more minutes. Um, Michael Hayes says, yeah, drops, turnovers, penalties, same bullshit. Yeah, absolutely. Pacheco is a beast. That's from Chiefs uh, uh, from Jaguar. Um, yeah, it's 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 bad, man. Um, so on the defensive side of the ball, that's where the Chiefs have been struggling. They just kind of cannot get a stop. Uh, they, they finally did there towards the end of the first half. Keep your eye on Steve Spagnuolo's halftime adjustments in this one. Um, you know, Jake Browning doing a nice job in this game. He's been really efficient. 11 for 16, 98 yards and a tutty. Joe Mixon is I, – I, I said in the pregame, I'll, I'll cop to this, I didn't think that, that the Bengals would run the ball as much as they are in this game. Uh, they're trying to take advantage of the fact that the Chiefs are are weak against the run. 24 carries in this game. And I think something the Chiefs probably didn't foresee is seven carries for 32 yards and a touchdown from Jake Browning. He's, he's he, he can move a little bit. So th that's the big thing that I think Steve Spagnuolo is going to have to watch out for in the second half is – Jake, I, I don't know that you want to spy Jake Browning, but the Chiefs need to be aware of the fact that he's going to run. And he, they're trying to nickel and dime the Chiefs, right? They're trying to dink and dunk the ball down the field. They've they've targeted Drew Sample, the tight end, four times. He's got three catches for 21 yards. The Chiefs have largely done a, a good job against Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. They each only have one catch, uh, Jamar for 24 yards, T. Higgins for 19. I believe Higgins is injured. And I don't know that he came back into the game. So that's that's part of it. So now the Chiefs, look, on the on the shot to Jamar Chase, they should have been double teaming him on the pass interference that, that went on Sneed. I want Sneed to keep playing Jamar Chase physically. But in a situation like that where you're down there in the red zone and T. Higgins is off the field, you need to give him some help in that situation. Um, take him away. Make Jake Browning make a play. But I think the Chiefs just need to buckle down a little bit. They need to keep – uh, Browning from running on them. Uh, so maybe you do spy him occasionally. What what I did see was a better pass rush for the Chiefs at the end of the half. That's when they got, I think it was a three and out. Um, and then they got the ball back really quickly and set themselves up for a chance to score. Uh, yeah, it was three plays minus one yard. If, if they get pressure on Browning early in, 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 in each series in the second half, I think the Chiefs have a really good chance to win. But they've got to take care of the football and, for the love of God, get MVS out of the game. Get him out of the game. Uh, that, that, that's, that's all I could say about it. Um, uh, Chiefs again says, did MVS get mad at Patrick? Uh, I don't know. Did he? <laughs> did he tweet at me from the, from the, the, the locker room at halftime? Um, yeah, he's just, you know, he, he, he can't do it. Um, he can't play anymore. Uh, let's go to the chat before we get out of here. Uh, 19 EHF. MVS was successful with Rodgers. Why would Veach think it wouldn't work with Mahomes? I mean, it did work last year. MVS was solid for the Chiefs last year. He he played big for them in the AFC Championship game, helped them go to the, 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 the Super Bowl. Uh, or maybe it was the, uh, the divisional game against the Jaguars and everybody was hurt is what I'm thinking of. Um, so, you know, it wasn't... Signing MVS was not a, was not a bad move. It, it's the fact that he he's fallen off a cliff this year for whatever reason. Um, he's just not effective at all. And they need to move on from him, not in the off season, but right now, like make him inactive. 
if you have to. Um, he can't play. And he's he's hurting. You can't keep putting guys out there who are actually taking the team backwards. They don't have the margin of error for that. So, you know, in the second half, they need the defense to step up a little bit. They need to continue to stay disciplined, not give up big plays, but they, they can't allow these long drives from the Bengals. So it's going to be really important to see Spagnolo adjust at the half. If he can adjust, start getting more pressure and stop those quarterback runs. I think we've seen, as long as they don't turn the ball over, that the offense has enough here to move the ball. Keep pounding Isaiah Pacheco. Keep doing the dinking and dunking, the short passes. It seems to be working. I, they were exercising some play action. I think that's really smart. Get the ball to Kelsey a little bit more. Get it to Noah Gray. But Chiefs are in trouble. I mean, they need to win this game. If they don't and Denver wins, um, <laughs> the, 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 the AFC West is up for grabs next week. As crazy as it is. And by the way, Denver's winning 13 to three at the half over the Easton stick led chargers. So if you're Kansas city, you might want to take care of this one and maybe you get yourself a little bit of a bye week next week. If they don't, it could be a really, really disappointing season more so than it already has. I will be back after the game with our, our pal from sports illustrated, Matt Verderam will break this thing down for you and then send you off to, uh, to drink your troubles away to end 2023 here, but hopefully the Chiefs can send us in to the new year with a win. We'll see you after the half, but until then, keep the faith, and as always, go Chiefs.